CCP Podcasting Productions. Welcome back to Behind the Curtain Territories. I am Chris Page. That is Eric the Lariat Steele. We are back on a Saturday morning for us uh, to talk fucking professional wrestling. The graphics up on the screen. Buddy, we're picking up from where we left off uh, what, a week or two ago uh, with Memphis Part 2. What is going on with you, dude? And what are you thinking about Part 1 that aired, I think, two weeks ago when we dropped this video? And the, the piggyback rivalries with Andy Kaufman and Jerry Lawler that we did last weekend, man. What are you thinking? That was a great uh, great segue from our territories into rivalries with Kaufman and Lawler. I mean, you think Memphis, you think Kaufman and Lawler. Uh, but Memphis has covered so much ground, so many big names. Uh, it's such a long history, probably the longest running territory of all time. So we got a lot to get into. Uh, and we're probably not going to cover the whole 80s today because there's just so much good stuff. Absolutely. Uh, we picked, uh, I, I went through and I picked out about, picked four matches, essentially, uh, just to set it up for the for the viewers and uh, and those watching on, uh, on YouTube. Um, you know, not necessarily four matches that would uh, encompass you know, 82 to 87 ish, but I wanted to, you know, get a feel for some of the top talent that was in the Memphis area. And, and I think we're, we're going to encompass some of that or most of that throughout uh, the, the four matches that we've got. Uh, I'm going to, I will tell you that we're going to highlight, uh, you know, the main event of this particular show, if you will, is the very, very infamous, uh, hair versus hair steel cage match with Jerry Lawler and uh, Austin Idol, uh, which should be really, really good. Yeah, uh, that was a huge match. Caused a riot when they shaved Lawler. Uh, you know, this was, they also shaved Bill Dundee's head, wife's head at some point. Uh, I don't remember when that happened, but that <laughs> that was an, also another huge moment in Memphis wrestling. Uh, but Lawler, man, this, when he got his head shaved, that caused a big riot. Uh, so luckily they did it in a steel cage. I mean, we're going to get into all of it, bro. Uh, when you talk Memphis and you talk the 80s, you got to talk about Dutch Mantel. Am I right? Like he, dirty, you got to. Dirty fucking Dutch. Uh, we'll discuss a little bit about Dutch and some of the uh, the ongoings in the territory over our match that we're going to watch because, lo and behold, it does feature Dutch Mantel, uh, and he has taken on Jerry the King Lawler here. Uh, Lawler and Dutch, obviously, you know, as far as in Memphis and throughout Southern wrestling, are, are, have been tied together uh, like nobody's business. Uh, you ready to get started with this and talk a little bit about Dirty Dutch and, and some of the ongoings of the territory? I am. Uh, I'm really excited to watch this match. I've never seen Dutch and Lawler wrestle before. Uh, you know, listen to Dutchman tell story time with Dutch uh, clips from his podcast. He said him and Lawler only wrestled each other three times. Um, you know, they started out as like a baby, baby little feud. Uh, and, you know, one time Lawler was the baby face. They, you know, he get the bigger reaction. The second time Dutch was the, getting a bigger reaction. And the third time it was split pretty even. He said, you know, they only wrestled each other three times, but it was big business when they did. And it wasn't very often that they did, especially back then, baby, baby matches. So it was definitely different. Well, I had options. Uh, like there were a couple that I could have picked and, uh, I wish you know every match that we we watched here was those thirty to forty minute fucking classics, but uh, that that'll eat up half of our fucking show. So I had, <laughs> yeah. I had to condense it down a little bit. So I went old school here and I found studio match, and we'll get started with this. Uh, you ready to rock and roll? I'm ready, man. All right, man. Let's go in three, two, one, play. And man, I love this old studio wrestling too. Like uh, that's when NWA restarted. Oh. Yeah, man, we got uh, we got Lawler on the mic. Let's track this real quick. Let me give it a little <laughs> yeah, that's volume. Why I, that's why I stopped talking. What I'm going to do with you, Dutch Mantel, is I'm going to put this belt right here, and we're going to have us a little wrestling match. Oh, that is exactly right, baby. And the winner of that match can come out here and pick up this belt, and he can call himself the king, and the loser can get himself a bus ticket and get the heck out of Memphis, Tennessee, or wherever. Can you understand that? Yeah, but he I'm not out. believing it. Whoa. Uh, uh -huh. well, it looks like we've got ourselves a loser. There we go. With two of the hottest single wrestlers in the entire... Man, I'm like, they're looking like they're hot at each other, too. 
Oh, I know. And it's not very often you meet somebody that's got a more impressive uh, chest hair than Jerry Lawler, but Dutch Mantel's got the chest in the back on him. Well, you know, they ain't got nothing on Albert. <laughs> so, I, I remember the first time I ever saw Dutch Mantel was on a trading card. I had a, some WCW trading cards from like 1991 or something. Yeah. In order to have stats on the back, I would say, like, what's your favorite move? Uh, and all these people would have, like, whatever their finishing move was. And then Dutch Bed Teletrading card said, the one that doesn't hurt. <laughs> <laughs> oh, these guys have just oh, my God. Yeah, that Dutch, was, Dutch was, was crisp in the ring here. Oh, yeah, he was a good worker, man. Like, no doubt. Good worker, good booker. Yeah, good talker. tremendous success in Puerto Rico, didn't he? Oh, yeah, he was the booker there for a long, long time. Uh, he actually, after the Bruiser Brody incident, uh, you know, he went back to Puerto Rico, not directly afterwards, but uh, a couple of years later, he went back and people said, you know, you and Brody were friends. Like, how can you go back? He said, man, there ain't nowhere else for me to work. Like, like what else am I going to do? You know? Yeah, it was kind of a crying shame. You know, you would you would think that the Dutch would have had a bigger impact in, in other territories. Yeah, I mean, he spent, uh, so he was the booker in Florida. Yeah, he was the booker in Florida when Eddie Gra he took over after Dusty was gone. He was the booker when Andy Graham uh, passed away. He said, you know, after him and Eddie were so close, after Eddie passed away, he just kind of lost his desire for it, and then he came to Memphis from there, and he spent a long time in Memphis. Yeah, he you was know, definitely he a staple there. He and Lawler, uh, yeah. and I think what I, when I think Memphis and I think like singles wrestling, I think Lawler, I think Dutch, I think Austin Idol, and I think Bill Dundee. Yeah, I mean those are really the four biggest singles names. I mean, there's a couple other guys like they bring a lot of guys in and out, but as far as like four top single stars, those are really probably about the top four. Big right hand by oh, Lawler right there, running right. Yeah, all had great punches. He did. God, I love watching this old shit. It's so good. Wrestling yeah. is not what it used to be. Yeah. It's not, man. It's much different. So, uh, and like I was saying earlier, I like the studio setting so much. That's like when they first brought back NWA. That's why I was super into it. Like the studio setting and stuff like that. Big body drop over the top rope. Uh, I was doing a... Uh, a thrown together last minute live stream last night on tag teams. Called it the Tag Team Throwdown. And one of the tag matches that we watched is going to come out on the channel, I don't know, in a week or so. Uh, one of the matches we watched was Demolition uh, versus like the British Bulldogs or something like that. And the finish oh, man, was, those... oh, it was great. Uh, the finish was so simplematic. Uh, it wasn't overdrawn out. It wasn't overbooked. It was like a cane shot to the back and uh, yeah. a quick drop down into a pin. But it got so much fucking heat with the crowd. It was ridiculous. I was like, that right there. It's, the, the, it's a such a simplematic formula, and it works for so long. Why wouldn't it work today? You know. I mean, Ned. I think we've just seen too much nowadays, man. I mean, you run over somebody with a truck for a finish nowadays. I don't know if anybody's going to even put a cane shot over. Yeah, well, somebody's going to kick out of a truck shot, too. Yeah. <laughs> oh, look at that right hand. Dutch is on fire here, man. Dutch is looking good. Yeah. Lawler's looking good. Uh, you know, Obviously, we talked a couple of weeks ago. Lawler's bought in at this point. So, he and Jerry are, are, are booking in six-month intervals. And... Uh, you know, yeah. Business is 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 well. Um, you know, by, go a little behind the curtain uh, with our with our viewers, with you and I. We were texting earlier this week, and uh, I, I I I friend of the show, Goth, right? So he uh, sends me some some links every now and then, right? And uh, he sent me a link last week, and he asked me on the live show, "Did you get a chance to look at that?" And I said, "Oh yeah, I did." Uh, and I, I told the story about you. I was like, uh, you know, you between between you and uh, between Goth and, and Eric Steele, I get links sent to me about every day, and I see <laughs> so much stuff. Well, one of the things that you sent me last week, 
was uh, was Ricky Morton involved in one of the many concession stand brawls, and it sparked a conversation that was like, well, fuck, man, <laughs> Lawler and Dundee did it once, and if it worked, let's go back to that well. Yeah. And, and back to it, they went many times for a drink. Yep. Every time it was, it was a little bit less in the cup, but, you know, it always gave, always quenched the thirst for a little while. Oh, about the pile drop on the floor. Oh, back body drop by Lawler. Yeah. I think careers are on the line here. Losers leaving. You got the chair? Yeah. Listen to that crowd, man. Oh. Oh, man. Not, no DQ? No DQ there? Yeah. That's Lawler's career. It should be yeah, done. I mean, should... I think chair shots weren't very common back then either. When is this? 80, 80 what? 84? 83, maybe? I am not 100% on the day. Oh, Lawler, the most big comeback. What I can tell you is that the matches that we picked out, or I picked out for us, does jive in our timeline. I just don't know where. <laughs> no, I can't tell you. Their chronological order. We'll say that. And if they yeah. are, that's great. It was meant to be. And if they're not, I'm man, sorry. Did best again. Dutch Mantel is so hairy, man. He is, dude. Like, like why wouldn't you just grab a hold of yeah. that mane on his chest and just yank on it? So there's a funny story about that. He's uh, talking about one time. I can't remember who he was working with. I think, like, one of the assassins. When he first broke in, and every night the guy would he'd have him. Dutch Mantel, take him over to headlock, take over, and he grab his back hair and pull him over with his back hair when he had him down the headlock. So he did that for like three days, and it hurt so bad, so he shaved his back. And the next day, the guy did it. He kept trying to grab his back hair. He didn't have any. He shaved his back. <laughs> he said that was like the last time he shaved his back, though. I was like, yeah, gotcha, motherfucker. <laughs> This is stupid, Laura. This is foolish. I'm going to say one thing right now. That man in the ring right there is the toughest son of a gun I've ever fought in my life. You're the toughest, buddy. I'm going to give you credit. And this is stupid, Laura. Come here. Come here. Uh, my body. There you go, make up. Uh-uh. Mutual respect. God. Come here. Look. This is stupid. This is foolish. Well, let this right here. Come between us. Hey, I want to make him an offer. I made him another offer. Uh-oh, let's come track here. this. Let me give you a little volume out there. Dutch Mantel <laughs> trying to get Lawler to come down to ringside. <laughs> Lawler asking, do you want to finish it? And Dutch says, no, I'm not finishing the match. <laughs> Dutch over. Hey, this is funny. Hey, okay. We're up here killing each other, man. We're killing each other. I'm hitting him hard shots. He's hitting me hard shots, and eventually, it's not going to be no more Dutch Mantel. It's not going to be no more Jerry Lawler, because in the long run, hey, look at it professionally, man. In the long run, we ain't going to be around here. We're going to kill each other. I said you's a tough man. Come here, come here. All right. All right. Come here. I feel like we may get a setup. Mantel yeah. Is, is just stopping and ask Lawler to. Uh... Listen, we've been beating our brains out. For six weeks, eight weeks, ten weeks, whatever it is, right? And we used to be friends. We let this come between us right here. We used to be friends, right? Huh? Okay, we let it come between us. And every time we wrestled, Jerry, every time we wrestled, that first family, at Midnight Express, they'd sit back in the dressing room, and they'd laugh their brains out because we made their life a lot easier. They loved to see us get up there and beat each other's brains out. They loved it. We made their life easier. And since we've been wrestling each other, Gibson's hurt, Dundee's hurt. The whole thing, man, is falling apart. So listen, I don't like to get laughed at, but hey, let's bury the hatchet. I've got more to lose than you got to lose, okay? I'll concede, you take the belt, okay? i got more to lose than you got to lose. Hey. And I'll make you a deal. Why don't me and you <laughs> team up and be a team, okay? And they ain't, they ain't a team, they ain't a team in a country that can beat us. And you keep the Southern belt, and hey, we'll be back. <laughs> Boy, well, that might friend. be the answer to the first family <laughs> right there, Let's Dutch. Say, hey, this is the same. You know that if you're, like you said, you're man enough to admit that I'm the champion. Right. You're man enough to admit that I told you the same thing after the second time we wrestled. I told him, I said, I said, Dutch, Jimmy Hart 
The Midnight Express, all these guys, every time we wrestle each other, they sit back and hope we kill each other. That's right. They want us to beat each other's brains out. And I told him then, I said, Dutch, why don't you and I get together and put some of these bumps and bruises on their heads, on Hart's heads, and on the Midnight Express's heads, instead of on each other. All right. Hey, this could be the thing that, that brings them together, man. I think you ought to bury the hatchet and That's get together. Nice. What a tag team. You keep the belt or whatever, okay? Can they change the card, put Dutch and I against somebody else, like Hart and the First Family or something like that? Well, Barry, yeah, set up the feud with the First Family. Negotiations that's the big, uh, big heel stable. Marlin is no fool. He would love to have Lawler and Mantel together, so I can't say it, but I would certainly say that uh, it's a money business. The crowd's here he would... Let me ask these people, do you think that there's any team around that could beat myself and Dutch Mantel? Listen to that audience, brother. Well, yeah, we are into it, man. Show them right here. It would... Your audience. Oh, he's oh. suckered him. Oh, he Dutch, got me. He had... That son he got of me it. too. <laughs> he got me. You uh, dirty, dirty Dutch. Oh. Where's oh the man. Here. I love oh. territory wrestling. Oh. Waller nailed that Dutch man tail jumping him while they were in the very act of shaking hands. Oh. Drops on him with the elbow. No, no way. You've got to <laughs> wow, what a, what a dirty was good nugget. fucking television. <laughs> Jesus, I love that. Oh, oh man. Oh, what a dirty heel. I was so like, oh man, he, they're, this is good shit. I, they're going to pull it out. Excuse me, Lance. I think this belongs to me. And somebody needs to hip on to find a way out there. <laughs> oh. Well, Dutch Lance Russell's not happy about this. At in a, all. In a situation, <laughs> just pull the lowest thing in there. I tell you what, let's uh, let's take time out, and we're gonna be back here in just a moment. Man, that's just a little piece of the TV that was going on <laughs> down there, right? What? Man, that was good. That was good. I mean, they suckered both of us in. Oh, they got you too? I know it got the fuck out yeah. of me. I, I'm sorry. I, I know it's early for us on a Saturday, but when I get into <laughs> shit and it, it gets me, like, that's just it. That's a, That was a genuine fucking reaction to me watching the wrestling. <laughs> uh, territory that's stuff. That's behind the that. right? That's like class, <laughs> class A shit that we just witnessed. Oh. Uh, I thought they were forming an alliance, forming a bond, and then he just turns on him. Suckered him in. Oh, man. Dirty, dirty bastard. <laughs> um, I mean, you talk about that, but that pop business, that had to, I mean, oh, oh my God, yeah. it was perfect. Perfect. So they said that, like, back in the day, in their heyday, in the 80s, more people were watching Memphis wrestling than watching any primetime television show in Memphis. Like, I think 80-some percent of the city of Memphis was watching the wrestling like little leagues and everybody were scheduling their games around when Memphis wrestling was on television. It doesn't surprise me. I mean, you know? it's, it's the South, man. Uh, it just things are different in 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 the South when it comes. I mean, I guess anywhere, any territory, in any <laughs> part of the country can say it. But um, that was good shit. God Almighty, that was good. Yeah, I love that creative and I love that TV. Um, <laughs> And that's just those are two obviously Lawler and Mantel, just two of the the pillars of 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 Memphis wrestling. Another pillar yeah. that we touched on earlier was Austin Idol, and uh, it's I got a match with him, and I, I found this one because I was like, ooh, it's 1983, <laughs> and it's got an Idol in it. But I know that we've got Idol and Lawler later on. Uh, but I snagged this one because of who Idol's opponent is. Yeah, uh, it, it, you know, you take it away. I'm Inter introduce um, us to Austin Idol's opponent for a bunkhouse match in October of '83. We got my man Stan the Lariat Hansen, who is hands down one of my all-time favorite workers. The dude is a tank. He he does not stop, and I am super excited to see this. I can't wait. I saw it. I had to grab it. I was like, bro. Uh, the Lariat's nicknamed the Lariat for a reason. I've seen the Lariat connect on uh, on several people in the ring, and 
Uh, I've seen heads roll uh, by our man <laughs> Eric Steele here, and that is all because of this man, Stan the Lariat Hanson. Let's get started. Uh, three, two, one, play. This is just going to be fun. Oh, man, look at the, those chaps. Look, we, we, if we get to cover in the AWA, there's some great Stan Hansen promos we got to watch, too. Oh, for sure. Uh, I'm going to start finding some promos and stuff like that just to put these, uh, as we go. But, um, man, I didn't know uh, that. I mean, I should have figured that Hansen made a, made a trip through Memphis at some point. Yeah, I'm not. I wasn't real familiar with his run in Memphis either. Like, uh, it's a surprise me that he was there, you know. But you never really hear about him in Memphis a lot. He was probably, but Hanson was one of those guys that didn't spend a lot of time in one territory because he was in Japan so long. Uh, I mean, outside of AWA, like you never really hear about him being in a territory for a, a long period of time, you know. Yeah, no, that does track. That makes. I mean, when you're making the money, he was making in Japan, bro. Yeah, plus he's like a special attraction. Like, you know, he's just going to come in and beat everybody up. You know, wh how long is that going to run until he loses your baby face? In the meantime, he's going to have to go to Japan, too. So it's hard to book somebody like Hanson or Brody or Abdullah in a territory for a long period of time. They're like a special attraction. <laughs> Look, he ain't even taking the hat off or nothing. He's just ready to. All right, he's going to take the hat off. <laughs> Bless you. And like Austin Idol. Go ahead. I'll say Austin Idol's another guy that could have oh, spit the spit tobacco it. in his eye. Spitting tobacco juice in his eye. Uh... He's a fucking spitting cobra, Stan Hansen. <laughs> strike first, strike hard. <laughs> <laughs> cobra Kai, motherfucker. <laughs> Should have blinded him but, uh, and busted uh, him with the lariat. <laughs> yeah. That but it was great. Just spit the tobacco juice in his eye like he's outlawed Josie Wells or something. But, uh, you know, Austin Idol is a guy that could have been, like, a huge star. Like, he was very much like superstar Billy Graham. Uh, you know, he was kind of Hulk Hogan before Hulk Hogan. Uh, but he didn't like to travel, you know. He was happy, you know, make, like Lawler, making a lot of money and close to home. Didn't want to travel. So, I mean, you can't really blame him for that. No, you're right. This uh, this right here is an 83. Uh, I think Hogan is. Did he just leave the AWA? Or is a uh, 83, yeah. That might have been about the time of Rocky Three, so he might have been in WWF. Oh, okay. Well, he's then made the decision to leave then to go do the film if that's the case. All right, yeah. It makes yeah. sense. Yeah. Well, I'm not sure. I think um, he was saying one bunkhouse match you know, they, you know this was did has dusty done a bunkhouse match by this point in 83 i would say he has they haven't done the bunkhouse stampede match okay but they've probably had a bunkhouse match bunkhouse matches are just like basically no holds barred street fight just a different name for it mm. but the bunkhouse stampede hasn't happened yet oh Oh, he's gonna choke him with the security rope. Oh yeah, he is. That's you know that strong rope. Look how many people can hold back. Right. It's a stampede. Yeah. <laughs> and Hanson goes for the eye. I mean, Austin Idol worked with just about everybody through through Memphis and and had a good run. Oh yeah. He was big in Memphis. He did some Georgia. Uh, Drew could talk. Look good. Look handsome with that rope still on his throat. Like, this is like nowadays they take that stuff off before they get back in the ring, but then it just adds to the realism, you know? Mm -hmm. Little nuances that no longer exist. Yeah. That's like, I'll still watch old Terry Funk matches and just the way that Terry Funk sold is so good. It's like so original. Hanson is is abusing Idol. He's oh, so yeah. much bigger. Austin Idol's got to stick and move. He's not going to be able to work close to Hanson, or he is going to get mauled. You look at Idol, and I think you know 
Plus, you know, Austin I or Stan Hansen's getting plus ten toughness just for wearing the chaps. So. Oh yeah. Those, those <laughs> didn't come off. He dropped with that right hand though. Now, I might be wrong, but I think that referee is Ricky Morton's dad. I can't really see his face because it's uh, the quality. Yeah, yeah, old VHS, you know. I still got a VCR. I cut in some place. I actually have two VCRs. Those are relics, brother. I know. Have you seen how much they go for on eBay? No, how much? I'm genuinely like, curious. Like, there's some that are a couple hundred dollars, man. Wow. The VCRs because they're so hard to find nowadays. Hang on to it for nope. another 30 and then put it on the market. <laughs> yeah. Low blow. I was wondering what he was going to go for there. A knee to the nuts. <laughs> Look, people don't sell don't sell those shots enough nowadays. I spit on him. Oh, he just did it again. Oh, yeah, spit on him first. Yeah, he did. He had to give it back, right? That's right. You got to a good baby face and give it back to the hill what the hill gave them. And that's you know that's exactly what he did. Spit on him, dropped the knee on his boys. Uh oh, oh Hanson's got something. Oh, no, had a bull rope in his boots. I love Hanson. You know what? What's to me? Yeah. What's so? What's hilarious when I watch Stan Hanson match? And I'll tell you this, just because I think you'll appreciate it. Hansen was blind as a bat. So yeah. when I watch Stan Hansen matches, especially ones that I haven't seen before, I watch his hands. I watch his right hands. I watch his punches. I watch his movement. Referee's, hit, referee's hitting Stan Hansen. Yeah, that is Ricky Morton's dad. Uh oh. Morton. He couldn't get it. He was trying to get him to stop choking Austin Idol, and he wouldn't stop, so he started punching him. Well, I mean, there's no DQ, and in the process, you, you've you taken a win away from Stan Hansen because he would have choked out Austin Idol, and this would be over. Oh, what's he got? He's got, oh, he's got a tire tool. He got a tire iron. <laughs> oh, what is going on here? Uh, oh, I was about to say, I don't see the referee trying to get the tire iron away from Austin Idol there. He's all tied up. He's hog tied. Uh oh. I think Mr. Idol might be in trouble. Austin Idol stopped him as he came down with a tire tool. And Paul Morton is loose from that rope, finally. Here comes promoter Eddie Marlowe. Oh, look. The crowd having to sit the, the police having to get the crowd down. Oh, <laughs> look, shit. The... Lariat. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. See, just going to beat everybody up now. He said, look, this is a bunkhouse. I'll do what I want. Oh, Oh. He's blistering him with that tire tool. Blistering him, he says. He's blistering him. <laughs> Take it off. He said, I'm out of here, man. I'm out of here. I mean, that was Probably left the territory. That was something yeah. entertaining. I loved it. The finish was hot, man. Like, it was, I've never seen, you know, the referees start hitting their guy trying to get him off. Then he ties him up. Then the promoter runs out because he doesn't want his star getting stabbed in the head with a tire tool. And... We've never seen anybody jump on a promoter like that. That was a hot finish, man. That was, man. I love it. Now, who do you think? Who do, was that a Jerry Jarrett thing or was that a, was that a, uh, a Jerry Lawler? I, I don't know. I mean, I don't know. I don't know the time frame. I mean, it could have possibly been a Dutch Mantel thing, you know? 
Yeah. You never know. That's that's hot. That might have been a Jerry Jarrett thing, but I'm not. I'm, it's hard I'm to tell. I'm thinking it is because if it was a well, let me. Because that, that's gonna sound really bad on Waller, and it's not what I intend. But if it was a Waller thing, wouldn't he be on top? Wouldn't he be Waller in the ring with Stan Hansen? <laughs> Probably. Uh, you know, it, it might have been. This might not even been the main. That's a very good point. Like Eddie Marlin is hot. He's pissed. He needs to sell that Larry a little bit more before you start getting yeah. all huffy, bud. He just threw him out of Memphis. That was nice. And you got to think like the territories, they're running the same towns every week. So they got to come up. They got to be creative and come up with stuff to keep it fresh, man. Keep the crowd interested. Keep them coming back. So you got to come up with stuff like that. Uh, it's just a piece of what Memphis was known for. The booking was one of the things that we talked about on the first show. Uh, I mean, your territory, if you're the one of the last, if not the last remaining territory. And yeah, I think, like, I mean, they ran through what? Uh, the 90s? Yeah, they were in the Lawler 90s. Was uh, still working through a Memphis, I'm assuming it's just, it was still the Memphis base. Uh, yeah, I mean, so the name changed a couple times, but it was a lot of the same guys, uh, same territories. Uh, you know, it went from, was it CWA, CCW, uh, is what everybody just calls us Memphis. Uh, then it went to USWA, which I watched more USWA than I did the classic stuff. Uh, then from USWA, it spun off to Memphis Power Pro. Uh, and I mean, that was going on until mid to late 90s, Memphis Power Pro was. Uh, Memphis Power Pro had a lot of the developmental stuff from WWF. Oh, okay, yeah, that's what I. It's where oh man, there's so much to do. This is only like a nine part series. <laughs> um, in the mid '80s, uh, let's 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 kick it up a notch. Something that didn't have to do with Lawler, didn't have to do with Dundee, didn't have to do with Idol, didn't have to do with uh, with the other pillar of of Memphis wrestling. Uh, they got Randy Savage and Rick Rude through there in the mid '80s. Uh, yeah, Savage, uh, obviously, in the Outlaw uh, promotion that his father ran in, in Kentucky. Uh, it was rivaled Lawler's promotion and, and Jerry Jarrett for the longest time. And uh, I'm not sure what happened with the promotion, but eventually Savage gets over into Memphis, right? Yeah, so uh, ICW, that was the Poffos. That was, uh, you know, uh, man, I can't remember his name. Uh Angelo. Uh, yeah, Angelo. His, son, his name was escaped me. Uh, Angelo Poffo was a promoter. Uh, basically, just started you know, to run with his sons. Uh, and they were considered an outlaw because they weren't part of the NWA. Uh, they were based out of Lexington, but they ran Louisville, you know, which was a Memphis town. They ran in Tennessee, which was you know, Memphis territory. Uh, you know, they ran rival to Memphis for a long time. They would cut promos on their television, challenging the Memphis guys to fight, saying how they were so much tougher. Uh, and then eventually, you know, business was down for both of them, so they started working together. Like, hey, Memphis, this isn't going good for you. This isn't doing good for us. Together and pop business for both of us. Uh, and it, you know, pop business big. Uh, Randy came in, worked a big, long feud with uh, Lawler. If you're thinking... Memphis singles, late seventies, early eighties, like Savage was a big part of that. Uh his feud with Lawler, he had a feud with Dutch. Uh first pile drove I've ever seen through a table. Savage pile drove Ricky Morton through a table on Memphis TV. Uh well I don't know if it was on Memphis TV. They showed it on TV. It was at a big show, you know, at the Mid South Coliseum. So Randy Savage was very integral to Memphis in the early eighties and I think he went to WWF from Memphis. So uh, you know, it was obviously a big part of his career, too. Oh, no doubt. Yeah, I do believe uh, WWF was his next stop. Uh, I'm going to get started with this one. You ready? Yeah, I'm ready. All right, let's do it. Three, two, one, play. The opponent. Rick Rude. Yeah, ravishing. Look, so that's the same trunks that Savage wore when he first went to Memphis, too. And Savage was a great athlete. Oh, I think he was one of the best high flyers of the time in America. And he's also like 250, 260. Like, he's a big dude. And the infamous Savage Waffle House story. Have you heard that one, I'm sure? 
No, no. Well, you well, haven't heard the Savage Wolf Hall story. May, I may have, as you're telling it, yeah. it come back to me, but I, I may not know it as a Wolf Hall story. So I can't remember if it was in Memphis or Nashville. I think it was in Nashville, uh, but it was running through the Memphis territory. Savage uh, is at a Waffle House. That, that Savage there, Dutch Mantel's there, and I can't remember who else is there. And some guy comes in, and you know, Savage is hungry. Uh, some oh look, he's chasing Jimmy Hart. Look at this, <laughs> man. Savage was like the best crazy dude ever. Uh, so some guy said there, he's talking about how he he just got engaged to this girl, and the girl works. <laughs> At Waffles, it's his waitress. And Savage is hungry. He's waiting on his food. So he gets to the point of hangered. He said, Hey, nobody gives a crap that you guys are getting married. And so that guy starts arguing with Savage. The guy pulls out a knife on Savage, right? Mm -hmm. So okay. Savage takes his steak knife, and the two dudes get in a knife fight in the Waffle House. So nobody gets too hurt. But the police get called. And they're like, Randy, like they know who Randy Savage is, big star in the area, you know, like, Randy, just come on out, blah, 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 we'll sweep it under the rug. Savage is still hot that he never got his food. He's hot about fighting with this guy. He's just over the edge, like he's lost it. And so eventually they have to send in the police dog. Well, Savage won't come out. So they send in the police dog. The police dog bites Randy Savage on the leg. I want to say the butt, but the butt might just be for a good story. And, you know, in wrestling, you never let the truth get in the way of a good story. So we're going to say the police dog bit Randy Savage on his butt. He had to get stitches. It's in the newspaper. They just play it up as an angle, uh, as part of an angle. You know, how crazy Randy Savage is. And he, he gets in a fight with a police dog in a Waffle House. <laughs> I remember the dog story, the dog part of the story. Just didn't know it was at the Waffle House, but yeah, no, I mean, that's just, that just that yeah, legend becomes fact, print the legend. Yeah, <laughs> look at Rick Rude, man. Rick Rude was something else too. Yeah, uh, Rude's not too long, and he's on his way to the WWF as well. Yeah, uh, in a I years. So he's so good, man. His stuff with, uh, I mean, these two guys get the best matches out of Ultimate Warrior. Facts. Uh, they, so that's saying it, something. Yes, that says a lot. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna tell you something. You know, watch. Oh, look at that! Big fireman's carry. That's five. nice. Yeah. Let me tell you somebody else who got a, a good match out of the Warrior, and I saw it on a house show. Was and you're gonna laugh, baby. The Honky Tonk Man. Oh, that doesn't surprise me. Honky Tonk Man probably just ran around and bumped off of him. A lot of ha ha gaga, you know. Uh, oh, but Warrior <laughs> don't look at me. <laughs> <laughs> that airplane spin so <laughs> that was great. Uh, Warrior, uh, Warrior sold, man. Uh, Honky, really? Yeah, Honky had mostly offense. Wow, that's that was, surprising. Was, I'm telling you, bro. I'm telling you. I was super shocked. Oh, look at Savage. He's just running He's... around jumping on table. What if that thing would have collapsed? <laughs> Those are pretty sturdy tables. They're not like the announced tables nowadays. <laughs> Is that glitter? Yeah. Adrian Street in the house tonight. <laughs> Savage just ran around like a wild man. Yeah. Jimmy Hart with this kimono on here. I do need to, I do want to preface. Like, I don't watch any of these matches that I find. I just look at the titles and I'm like, oh, let's do that. Because I want to be surprised by what I see. Uh, That's all right, man. I like the genuine reaction. Like, if I'm doing commentary on a match, I, w I don't want to know what's going on. I just want to watch it and give a genuine reaction. Yeah. And there's Gaga going on all over this week. <laughs> I mean, the crowd's into it, though, man. Like, it's interactive for them. Like, the people didn't want to just watch guys do moves, you know? Yeah. No, they wanted, to, like, they wanted to see it. It's like the storytelling and the pacing and things like that. Like, uh, you know, talking like if we were going to dip into modern wrestling, talking about that, like, like AEW, like you're going to see a lot of cool moves. And I'm not like hating on it. Some people like that. You know, if you like that, that's whatever. Uh, but you're going to see a lot of cool moves, man. Like I'll watch clips of it and just see the cool moves. But then when you watch like WWE, you're going to see a lot of good storytelling and a lot of pacing that gets the crowd into it. And uh, I mean, that gets more casual viewers because it's a story and it's pacing and it's drawing people in. 
And that's like, this was pacing and storytelling. Like, they're building up the anticipation when they finally fight with all the gaga that they're doing, you know? Yeah, no, they, they're kind of getting into the meat and potatoes of it right now. Yeah. Um, just interesting to see. Again, we look at all these territories and all these matches and the territories. You see a lot of familiar faces. You see people constantly moving and shaking and trying to enhance their 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 presence within uh, professional wrestling. It just it's like uh, you know I equate it to and this may be a hot take. Uh, people ask me, hey, do you like, do you like football? Well, I, well, depends. What do you mean it depends? Are we, ta- well, are we yeah. talking? Are we talking NFL? Or are we talking college? Yeah, well, or, XF, or XFL. Yeah, so, well, yeah, well, right. uh, are we talking college? Or are we talking NFL? Well, you know, what's the difference? Well, there's a big difference. Yeah. Uh, you know, my stance is very simple. I like college football because, uh, you know, and the same can be said for uh, college sports in general because you don't have a, a big money contract at that point. You're working yeah. to get that big money contract. So you're going to see the best in college than you are in anything professional. Yeah, I prefer college football to the NFL, but now they got the NIL deal, so you can get a big contract in college. Yeah, but well, uh, I've preferred college football over NFL football for a long time. Yes, for sure. Before NIL was a thing, I guess that has <laughs> changed the game a little bit. Oh, look, yeah. he, just rubbed, look he just rubbed his head. The one the strut rubs the bald head of Kerry Morton. It's not Kerry Morton. Oh, man, Joe Morton. I was going to say Mills Lane. Just kidding. <laughs> ah, gotcha. Look at the jabs. Oh, man, those savage jabs, man. Yes. Fucking A, man. The crowd is, is, is coming alive. Oh, man. Rick Rude was a great seller, too, man. Rick Rude was great, period. He is uh, yeah. on my list yeah. of, uh, of talents that is a crying shame that they never got a run with uh, with the WWF strap. Oh, slap. Yeah, uh, I mean, I can see an argument for him winning, but WWF's a babyface territory. Oh, oh, man, imagine how hard that was on oh, his God, knees. Yeah, that's got to suck. Uh, I'll tell you who rounds that out. Rick Rude, uh, Ted DiBiase, uh, and Kurt Hennig. Yeah, yeah, those three. I, I would say Owen Hart too. Well, Owen Hart, I, I yes, but for different, different. I don't. I wouldn't say as a heel. I say that yeah. they, they missed the opportunity with that after they fucked Brett, and they had a good setup for uh, what could have been a, the WrestleMania moment. Yeah, that would have been a really good WrestleMania moment. Uh, but I mean, I think you know, also when he was the heel and he was shooting with Brett himself. I think he could have had a run there. Oh, we got oh, King yeah. Kong Bundy coming in here. Yeah, f- facts. That's Young that King Kong. Attitude. Yeah, King Kong Bundy. Check that out. I go back to the that cage yeah. match uh, with, with Brett and Owen at SummerSlam. I think that that could have been a good opportunity. You're absolutely correct. Yeah. Uh-oh. Fuckery oh. and Rude has knocked off Savage. Conveniently, the referee was not in place. Yeah. The referee was bumped. He made the count from the outside. I've never seen that before. Like, Angelo Poff was hot about it. You had to get to the best positioning, right? Yeah. Well, I think he was bumped on the outside, so he just recovered. He was still on the outside and saw the pin. Uh, bud, we got our longest, uh, our longest match of the program it's our main event like there's been a lot there's a lot of stuff that happens with memphis wrestling guys and like we said there's i think what we're gonna do with territories is once we pick one we're just gonna break it down a little further and and do a couple of shows per territory watch some matches get more educated with talent uh and see where it takes us so today's main event dude you talked about it earlier uh how it nearly caused a riot had it not been in the cage yeah. Uh, it is Jerry Lawler and Austin Idol, the hair versus hair cage match. 
It doesn't get more Memphis than this in 1987. <laughs> no. This is a huge match for Memphis. This is a, uh, you know, milestone Memphis moment, peak Memphis territory, like huge business at this time. And, uh, I mean, you don't really get two bigger names. You know, you throw Bill Dundee in here, maybe Terry Funk or Dutch, and you got like the, all the biggest names ever for Memphis. But, I mean, it doesn't get much bigger than Lawler and Idol. Hair versus hair, still caged. Like, this is going to be a good one. Let's get started, man. Uh, three, All right. Two, one, play. Look at how big that cage is, too. Oh, yeah, dude. And how it just doesn't sit on the ring. It's like yeah. a... It's like a hell in a cell without a lid. Exactly. That's exactly where I was going. No it was a little parched. I have to quench my thirst. <laughs> <laughs> That's a big cage, too. It is. And, like, I really have a question out there for the diehard Memphis fans that live the territory and that were there. I wonder if they ever did a big cage like this and put a top on it and, and did a, a sell before a sell was a done. Yeah, I mean, I'm not... A, I'm not familiar with one, but uh, I mean, you got to think it was a little bit different. They didn't ha back then; it wasn't hung above the ring. They lowered it down. They put it up. Yeah, you know. Sure. So they probably didn't have the lids back then either. I'm pretty sure that War Games was like the first one with the lid. Yeah, that's the first one that I can remember. Yeah. Building it up, giving the gaga. Paul Heyman right there too. I see that. Yeah, look at how young and small he was. I mean, look at all the like the parallels of Paul Heyman and Jim Cornette too. Both like getting their big starts in Memphis, you know, like worked with a lot of the same people. But have two polar opposite takes. I've heard, I've heard many people describe uh, Jim Cornette as the Southern Paul Heyman, or Paul Heyman as the Northern Jim Cornette. Okay, I can see that. Let it confuse me. Appreciate it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, right here. Yeah. Well, he's tired of talking. He's getting into it. Yeah, exactly. Look at that baby blue outfit. I like that too, man. That's some baby face gear. I was about to say, you could always tell when Lawler was a baby face and when he was a heel based on the colors of his gear. <laughs> or the lighter colors is the baby face. The white hats and the black hats, right? Yep, well, my favorite is the uh, is the purple and gold. Oh, yeah. I yeah. like that. I like the baby blue too. Don't get me wrong. I think the baby blue is his flare gear, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. As well. Ripping the Tar Heel gear right here. Yeah. Uh, I did find, and, you know, maybe that's a special show we do at, uh, at our, one of our milestones. I found, like, a, and I don't know if it's the full match or if it's a full match, but there's a 58-minute version of that where Jerry Lawler match out there. Maybe, you know, oh, man. Yeah, they probably did an hour of Broadway. Uh-oh. Oh, that's a driver already. I would imagine, too. I think that that is the case. It could be. Yeah, I'm gonna have to look a little deeper into that, but it is that's that's a that's a special project for you and I to sit down and do. Oh, that'd be nice. Look at this. Is Austin Idol bleeding yet? Yeah, nope. Yeah, nope, not yet. No. Maybe. Paul He's trying to get in already. Shit on the floor, man. It's great. You know, I have, here's something about Memphis. Yeah, look, let's look at the turnbuckles. How I was about to say that too. Look how right? small they are. It's just duct tape wrapped around them. It's no pads. Not gonna be great on the back. <laughs> no. Austin has been busted open. I mean, you get hit with one of those turnbuckles, you probably will get busted open. Again, as 
Oof. Oh, oof. Oof. Those jabs, man. You never really see jabs in pro wrestling very much anymore. I, and I think that's probably why I fucking fall in love with just about anybody who throws them. Just like yeah. that. Like, I mean, like I go back to Dusty, obviously, Jerry. Uh, the, the Road Dog did his jabs. Uh, Dustin does the jabs. Cody's doing the jabs. When I see him, it's just like, ah, oh, yes. Give it to me. Give it to me. <laughs> I started using I do the big Dusty comeback a lot now. I started utilizing it. It's just... It still gets a reaction too, man. Everybody. I mean, it's just synonymous, right? All you gotta do yeah. is throw the jabs, work your own, I mean, work your own finish into it. Uh, yeah. I mean, if you wanna go all oh, a little savat kick by Rollin. You wanna go all <laughs> out for the nostalgia? Yeah, bionic elbow, call it a day. Yeah. I do the bionic elbow into like a, a big crossbody type thing. Okay. And it's, I mean, like people, they get the dusty roads going, man. Like. It's kind of like when you chop somebody, you're going to hear a woo from at least one person, you know? Oh, yeah. That's, that's the, it, it, you know, back in my day, that was the, that's the go-to if nothing is working. <laughs> yeah, exactly. If nothing's working, chop somebody. They'll get it. They'll get it. something to it. It's still like that. Man, Jerry Lawler with these punches, he had some of the best punches. He's up there with right hands. Like, I could, I yeah. think that's another little thing. Again, guys, I'm telling you on the channel. Uh, we've got some things happening. 500 right around the corner. Uh, once we hit 500, we're, we're going to uh, look into the Patreon, doing live shows on Twitch. We get on, we get on Patreon. It's going to open up the doors for us to do so many other programs. I'm telling you, there's, uh, there's a lot of moving parts, and a lot of it is going to be driven around territories. I've got plans. So I think Austin Idol just hit Jerry Lawler with a gimmick. How dare he? Yeah. So Memphis was great for uh, guys like Lawler would do this all the time as a heel. I think that's what Austin Idol just did. They would have the phantom gimmicks. So they'd act like they're reaching their trunks, pulling something out. They'd hit them, reach in their trunks, put it back. Never had anything. Just, yeah. <laughs> just the illusion of it. And that's all you really needed, man, was the illusion of it. We talked about that. Lawler had always had that. I think I told you like, yeah. one of my favorite uh, little gimmicks was uh, – uh, the, the white tape wrap yeah. together, tape together, uh, form it, stick it in your tights, pick it out and use it. <laughs> uh, stick it back in your tights. Well, you only get one use out of it, but you got it. <laughs> but you got it. You got that one, right? They got, the, they got the chair in there, too. Man, they they are working and, and, and telling a, a great fucking story here. Ox Niles trying to bust Lawler open now. Oh, yeah, he is. He's like, what's good? Throw him into everything. Yeah. He's going to throw him into everything and get him busted open, get some revenge on him. Biting? Yeah. You don't, you don't really see biting anymore either. He's going up top. Oh, load of something. Oh, oh, look at that cell. I love that, man. Like, just stuck up in the air. That was nice. Uh, I got a question for you. This is just a, this is a personal question that only you'll understand. How does it feel to watch commercial free? Uh oh, man. This is nice. I ain't got to worry about it. Oh, hang on. Let me pause it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we thank you, Toddy. We thank you. Yes. Big shout out. Look right. at my, hooking the man up. Oh. That loaded oh, gimmick. That loaded. Right. Beating him with a pipe or something. Nothing. <laughs> Look, the crowd don't know. They're, they're into it. So I learned this when I first got in. They said, you know, a lot of the old timers told me, I said, people may think they're smart to the business, but don't let them be smart to your business. Right. So, like, if, if you stick with it, you know, they, they're going to get with it. This this crowd is red hot for Lawler. Oh! Ooh. That right uppercut, man. I get a fist drop. 
Oh, he tried a leg drop. Oh. I haven't seen Lawler try a second rope leg drop before. Me either. He's pulling this big vent. He's pulling out the big stuff, you know? I was working a match once and uh, the, the, I was putting a guy over and he was like, well, how do you want to, you know, I was supposed to go over and I was like, I'll just put him over or something. I don't uh, yeah. I'm not going to be here, so this is my last, one of my last shows, but I was going back to the fan dinner. Guys, like, well, I've never really won before. I was, I was, oh, Phantom Gimmick. <laughs> yeah. Times two. Back in the tights. Um, what? How do you? What can I do to beat you? And I was like, oh, man, man second rope fist drag. Second rope. Serious? I was like, yeah, dude. Like, he's like, you don't have to finish. I was like, it would be fucking great. And uh, I'd love to, to tell out to. I'd love to be able to say I got beat by a second rope fist drag. Uh, and sure enough, I went out and got beat by a second rope fist drop. It was great. All right, I got one for you. Who had the better fist drop, Lawler or Ted DiBiase? Oh, second row fist drop, Lawler. Standing fist drop, Ted DiBiase. Yeah. Trick swim. question. It was John Cena in the five knuckle shuffle. You're a fucking liar. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, missed the big guy. Look, these guys are missing everything off the ropes. Oh, we're going to get the fish drop this time. Give it to me, Jerry. Oh, headbutt. It was a headbutt. Oh, good sell by Idol. I don't know if that was really a sell, though. <laughs> as much as... Uh, Connection. Oh. Now they're both they're both hurting now. The strap hasn't come down yet, so you know the it's still we're still in the heat. This is true. Oh foot on the ropes. Foot on the ropes. You don't see enough like foot on the ropes nowadays either. No, you don't. Uh or, I don't know. I don't watch a whole lot of the modern stuff. I, I, I pitch what I, what I want to catch. And that's about it. Oh, short arm clothes on. Nice. Look, Lawler sounded like he just got clocked right in the jaw, too. I mean, this is a great match so far. Oh, Lawler in the ropes now. Yeah, answered with a foot on the <laughs> I always like the gimmick where, like, the heel, the manager would put the heel, the baby face would have the pin, the manager would put the heel's foot on the ropes, break it up, uh, then the, oh! Big sell Man, man. that was nice. And then, uh, smooth, then the baby face would be pinned, the baby face would put his foot on the ropes, and the manager would just knock it off, and the heel would win that way. I always like that gimmick. With the with the colors that Lawler's wearing, I was anticipating a lot more bloodshed from him. Yeah, I mean, uh, we still got time running, but maybe halfway through here. Oh, that's a good point. I think it's there. He's gonna rub his face up on the cage, slice him open. I'm gonna kill you, Lawler. Ooh. I'm gonna kill you, King. <laughs> I like this cage. Like I like the way it moves and everything like that. I mean, it's a it's a bird's eye view for the timekeepers. Look, Lance Russell doesn't even have a mic stand. He got to hold the mic the whole show too. Get that man. Yeah. How dare you, Jerry? How dare you, Jerry? <laughs> Y'all can afford a mic stand. Come on. I don't know which Jerry we're, we're blaming, but it's got to be Lola or Jerry. One of the two Jerry's. Oh, that's why I said Jerry. <laughs> Jerry. Oh, look, he's coming back up now. He's tired of this. He's tired of getting beat up. I've had it. Uh-oh, I think the strap's about to come down. The Memphis Coliseum's oh, about to come unglued. Oh, it is damn. Big right. Here we go. The king is about to go to school. I mean, there's something to say about these Superman comebacks. Like, you don't see those anymore either. You know, here's something I want to put in perspective. Oh. Oh. Uh, 
This is 87 is when this match takes place. And this this territory has now been in business for 10 plus years. And Lawler's been a, a big part of it as the focal point for the power play. Yeah. And there's, they're listening to the crowd. Oh, yeah. They're still, they're still uh -oh. super invested in it. Oh, just piled over the referee? did, that yeah. son of a bitch. No good, Austin Idol. Look at Paul E out there. He's... Oh. Oh. Oh, oh, that was nice. Two, three, four, five, six. Uh -oh. You know how vicious those inside cradles can be. I do. That's another <laughs> one that I love to lose to. People say, oh, you got beat by an inside cradle. Goddamn right. Yeah. So, I mean, you can keep your heat, like, losing to something like that. Because you're like, man, he, they didn't beat me. They oh, just caught baby. me. They, oh, the powder in the face. They're breaking well, out all the gimmicks. Let me tell you how I do it and how I did it. Like, same thing can be said with the second row fist job. Uh, <laughs> this is after 30, 33, 35 minute match. Yeah. Very competitive. Very you know, back and forth. Storytelling being told. And then, up oh, snake by a motherfucking inside trailer. Or, yeah, you can you know, be like, well, they didn't beat me. They just got lucky and they caught me. Well, exactly. The second round fist drop, I can, I can remember the finish exactly. Dude, I had him up. Skinner set him up for a superplex. Uh, sitting on the top turnbuckle. I'm up on the middle. I'm locking the front face lock. I'm getting ready to pick him up. You know, shots me in the ribs, pushes me back, and the crowd's going crazy. All, you know, 100 people. This is like, you know, <laughs> uh oh, Lawler. Spike D. Oh, the man. best fucking pile drivers ever. One, man. two, three. Like, I love the pile driver, man, but I'm kind of glad that they don't do them anymore. You know? Oh. Who is it? Who is this? Who we got in here? Tommy Rich. Tommy Wildfire Rich, you dirty son of a gun. He came out from underneath the ring. Oh, right, yeah. Oh. Oh. Hidden underneath the ring. That's nice. Hit underneath the ring the whole time. Why did he leave the ring just to come back into the ring? What is it now? He left the ring just to come back into the ring. That spike pile driver didn't work out too well. That did not work out. This is where you say it's a fucking riot. Yeah, the people getting hot. Uh, let me wrap the story up. Uh, he shoves me off the top the, the middle rope. He, he, he's, he's a job guy for essential purposes. And uh, he comes off the second rope first job. And one, two, three, and he's here on the Oh, man, that's awesome. Do you have a reaction from the crowd like that? Oh! Oh, hoo, hoo. split the uprights. He nutted them. Oh, see. The cops have come out. Yeah, holding the people back. Again, this is a time where they, you know, a rope is supposed to hold back, you know, thousands of people that if they get that cranky and that pissed and that angry. This is about to be real. Wait till they start shaving his head and see what happens. Come on, Jerry. Just sank. <laughs> These people can't believe it. Is Jerry Lore about to be bowling. As sad as I knew it was coming, and it's my heart still sank. I like the oh, hill, but underneath the maybe that's why the arcade was so big, so I could come out from underneath the ring. Oh, it's good booking. It's good booking. Yeah. It's hot. Look at the cops surrounding Paul Heyman. I mean, yeah, look. I mean, it's real. The, the, the heat is real. It's 
people are hot. Y'all can't shave his head now, right? That ain't fair. They got it open and got Paul Lee. Guys, they got yelling at They got a fan right at the doorway. Or is that a cop? I can't tell. It was the way he's turned sideways. And, like, you know, the cops, they all knew. They were in with the boys knew it was at work. But. I just, I, I love it, man. I bet you that crowd paid and thought they were going to see Austin Idols. Yeah. And then they got to see their hero, Jerry Lawler, get his head cut. Uh -oh. man, look, look. Who is this? It's a fan. <laughs> I think he thought better of it when he started climbing in. Uh-oh. Thought about getting on the other side while he was up. Yeah. Like, they got a cop. The cops coming in the cage now. I think. Let's get the let's get the Clippers. Let's get going here. The longer you stand in the ring, the worse it's gonna fucking get. Yeah. The uh, more dangerous. Still beating him up. Get. Still beating him up. Still beating him up. They got the chair in there to sit him in the chair, start cutting his hair. Well, oh, he's going to hit him with the chair. Oh, yeah, now it's time to start cutting. Well, maybe that's why the prolonged demon. Oh, yeah. They got to kill, pretty much kill the king. So they can yeah. sit long enough for us to hope to God these clippers work and his hair gets cut. <laughs> <laughs> I got Cornette, or not Cornette, but Heyman's got the bag. Oh, we got a barber. We had to wait for the official barber. We got to have a license to be a barber, so. Look at those people, man. Look at that wide shot. All those people standing up. It's, it's, it's insane. Oh, I love it. I mean, that's like emotional investment right there, man. I that's why I'm going to get out. Like they're, they're, they're 10 plus years deep, if not deep in the Oh, yeah. I mean, that, this territory's been running since at least the 60s, if not longer. You know, because somebody's been running there. May not necessarily have been Lawler, but they're at least 10 years invested in Lawler. I can't really see this guy in the white as I'm guessing that's the barber. Uh, who is that? All oh, those referee is Drake Owen. Oh, Paul Heyman had some hops there. Christmas come early for Paul Heyman yeah. here, right? He is having a fucking conniption. I'd like to get some hops like that nowadays. Oh, they're choking while they're out, too. They got a chain they're choking them with. Oh, man. Shaving the king. Oh my gosh. The 
Oh, and he's collecting it in the bag. I say it's always really hard to cut guys' hair because like they're all sweaty and it's matted up. Yeah. Scissors. Oh, man, I did not know that. Learn something new every day. Yeah. <laughs> Look, if I, that ever happens to me, I told my wife I'm going to rock the scarlet. So. She is absolutely horrified that I'm going to do that someday. But I used to shave my head bald in high school, man. Like, I shaved it bald in high school, and then I grew it out. I had really long hair, man. Like, it was very curly. But uh, if I had to straighten it out, it'd be down to my butt. But it was very curly, and now I just got the short hair. That's exactly what the problem is. Yeah. Let's put the rubber knock on. Learn something new every day, man. Boy, these people are hot. These people are hot, man. Yeah, well, I mean, you got to think about it if you're Lawler, right? Now. Like, I have to wait to sit here while this takes for fucking. Yeah, yeah. I'm probably scratching my head up. Yeah. And, like, and I have to be like, motionless. And, and this is pretty. Like, it's, yeah. it's matched up in your head. You know what that feeling is? You know what that feeling is? Oh, yeah, man. When it pulls your hair instead of cuts it, that sucks. Yeah, what a treat for Lawler. Yeah. yeah. At this point, you have some scissors on standby. Maybe they should have done a Lawler Dutch Mantel hair versus hair match, but instead of getting their head shaved, they got their body waxed instead. They got the hair, body hair waxed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like his hair wasn't even all that long. Yeah, come on out, see what happens. Like, it's all fun and games while you're in there. Then, like, you're like, oh, I got to get back to the locker room now. Right, that's, the, that's, that's, the, that's where the fun really begins. Yeah. I don't think the hair in the bag is as impressive as a, as a visual as they wanted. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you can kind of see it in there. Maybe like you see a little bit better live, but it's hard to see on the videotape. Yeah. Look, Barbara ain't stopping. He's like, well, I'll just keep cutting. Yeah, I'm here to do the job, but <laughs> I apparently get paid by the hour, not by the cut, so. How much did this barber get? I wonder if his business went under after this. Like, I ain't going to you. you shave Lawler's head. Uh-oh. We got fans climbing the cage. Mm -hmm. Uh-oh. Rich is getting all the heat he can get. Yeah. Oh, we're going to get 
this once. Is a baby face coming out or something? Listen, the crowd, they're getting hot about something. I mean, they better send somebody. <laughs> or, Look, Denny brush. Denny brush is all our off. She'll have a fucking brawl on her hands. <laughs> the answer is, y'all better get out of here. Declared himself the new king of Memphis. Uh oh. Rich is having the last words. Wildfire Tommy Rich. Well, they still beat him. Oh, look, he's got a nice little. Uh... Oh, man, I mean, I guess they cut as much of his hair as they could. Yeah, I mean, he didn't have a whole lot of hair. He didn't have the long hair, you know. They got it cut pretty short for him. That is just a, a little little piece. Of Memphis, right? Like, Man. So much stuff. So many stories. So. How's the big this, angle, too? This crowd is on the verge. You like, got their standing, they're pressed up against the cage. Yeah. Look, now they got to try to get out. Look, cops beating people back with their sticks. Yeah, yeah, no. Well, I'm looking for hands, right? Like, uh, yeah. These guys look, oh, look, look. Look at this. There we go. Start going. Oh, they, they, the, the, the shit ended right there. Uh, they, they got to that little gap and hauled fucking ass, man. <laughs> they loved it. Um, oh, man, that was awesome. Yeah, that's that's just a, another piece of the Memphis territory. And, uh, you know, we'll be back uh, in a couple weeks to, to do another territory show. We may just follow up and do another chapter of Memphis and, and call it yeah. a day. And, uh, there's make, plenty out there. You know, I wonder we'll have to see if the Mr. McMahon, uh, stuff is on the YouTube or not for the, from when he came down there. So before he ever started the Mr. McMahon character in WWE, he ran it in Memphis. So while Jerry Lawler's in WWF feuding with Bret Hart, Bret Hart's the baby face, Lawler's the heel. Was going to Memphis and feuding with Lawler, and Bret Hart was the heel, and Jerry Lawler was babyface. And Vince came down and was managing Bret Hart and started. That's where he test run and tried out the Mister McMahon character. So I mean, man, Memphis like Vince got a lot of stuff from Memphis. Got a lot of the cartoon sports entertainment stuff from Memphis because that was going on there first. Got a lot of good ideas from Memphis. Uh, and I mean, you know, there's the story of. Uh, during the steroid trial, he was going to bring Jerry Jarrett in to run if he went to jail. So, I mean, obviously, Vince had some love for Memphis. So, just so much rich history there. Oh, for sure. And like I said, I think this is the best approach. Let's uh, let's take it in little little chunks. Let's let's watch a little bit. Let's talk a little bit, and and just enjoy what was territories, man. Like uh, I think that this is uh, this was a good little follow up to our last program. Uh, fun fact, though. Next weekend's rivalry show is a very, it's a very special drop. Yes. So I, uh, you know, I'm gonna let you, I'm gonna let you sell it. Tell, tell the so, people what we're doing instead they, of instead of sticking to. We were, we were gonna, yeah, we were the Memphis thing. We're gonna break away. <laughs> very special. Go ahead. So we recorded these on Saturdays. Next Saturday will be the 19th. That's my birthday, and I said, look. We got to do Hulk Hogan and Macho Man for my birthday. My, the Mega Powers Explode, my all time favorite angle, my all time favorite storyline. Hulk Hogan, all time favorite wrestler. Macho Man is up there. Got to do the Mega Powers, man. 
we are going to do the Mega Powers uh, for sure as the rivalry for next week. I can tell you in advance, I will uh, – I will find some clips. It may not be, uh, you know, it may not be WrestleMania five. It may not be the the, the exact uh, deal with uh, with the breaking up or anything that's not going to allow the episode to be played on YouTube. Yeah. Uh, but we will definitely cover with a rivalry. I will definitely find some stuff. It's going to be a good one, uh, and then we'll pop back in. Uh, in two weeks and, and, and do another piece of the Memphis stuff, man. So Eric, you got anything you want to say to the people before we tie bow on it? Hey man, I'm glad you guys liked it. Uh, I'm glad you guys are watching with us. The channel keeps growing, get to 500. Uh, we're going to torture ourselves for your pleasure by watching the legends of wrestling. Uh, if you like this episode, uh, drop, drop a comment below. Just let us know which one of the matches were your favorite matches or which angle was your favorite angle. Yeah, for sure. Uh, also, catch us uh, if you love what we're doing here on Territories. We've got Behind the Curtain Live on Mondays and Thursdays at uh, 7 p.m. Eastern. Monday nights uh, is usually independent wrestling or a house show or, or a special program of, of odds and ends. Uh, Thursday nights are our spotlights. That's where we're talking about legends of professional wrestling. Watching back a lot of their clips, a lot of their matches. Uh, and just to, uh, discussing about our overall admiration of their, them and their talents and their abilities. And then we've got the watch-alongs that drop on the YouTube channel. Uh, we're rolling on Twitch. We're rolling on YouTube. Both of those links are down below. Discord is the place where you can catch early drops. That's, uh, that link's down below as well. I think that fixed that, so it's now able for everybody to get into it. Uh, outside of that, man, I think uh, I think that'll cover it, and uh, we'll see you next weekend. That's Eric Delariot Steel. I'm Chronic Chris Page. We will see you next week. Have a good one.